Hi everyone, I'm Natalie Kunzman, MD, and today we are talking about hunger hormones. The hypothalamus acts as though it's the control center for hunger and satiety. However, it is a receptor for a lot of chemical messengers or hunger hormones that will talk to it. So the first one we're going to talk about is ghrelin, which is a hormone that is mainly produced by the stomach and with very small amounts in the intestinal tract and the pancreas and the brain. Now, ghrelin has numerous functions and it is termed the hunger hormone because it is the one that stimulates appetite and increases food intake and promotes fat storage. So when we give ghrelin to humans, it increases food intake by about 30% and then it circulates into the bloodstream and talks to the hypothalamus, which is crucial in the control of appetite. Now, fiber will stretch that stomach and let your brain know that you are full, as do other foods as well. Ghrelin also goes up after intense dieting and that's why I think it is difficult to maintain weight loss in people who have lost some significant weight, but then it is hard to keep the weight loss off. Interestingly, patients who lose weight after bypass surgery are found to have lower ghrelin levels, therefore they're not hungry, and it seems to contribute to the fact that they can keep their weight off because that ghrelin has almost permanently been affected. So leptin is the opposite hormone and it is considered the satiety hormone and it's secreted by fat cells. So it tells us that we are satisfied and it talks directly to that hypothalamus. Now, Keep inflammatory foods away, which will store and create those fat cells. Exercise will increase the leptin. So if you're understanding a common theme, I am giving you strategies to improve these hunger hormones. The next hunger hormone is GLP-1, glucagon-like protein one. And that is normally released from your small intestine when you eat. And it works to slow down the process by which food leaves the stomach. And it will control some blood sugar after your meals. So it makes you feel full. And GLP-1 decreases acid secretion and decreases gastric emptying, as well as increasing the sugar usage in the muscle. So the benefit of GLP-1 has already been figured out and used in some diabetic medications like Bayetta, Trulicity, Victoza, and several more because they are mimicking GLP-1 hormone. So here we go. Inflammation lowers GLP-1 and therefore it will make us continuously be hungry. Insulin. We all know this is a regulator for sugar and it helps with storage and unfortunately it will not allow fat to break down. So stop carbohydrates, which is what stimulates insulin production to help pull the carbohydrate into the cell. CCK. Now I'm not sure many of you fine folks have heard of this one but it is commonly used uh, as a diagnostic tool, which we'll explain later. But CCK is actually produced in the duodenum, and it tells us that we are full, and fat consumption will actually trigger this. And then the fat will release CCY, and this is where we will use this tactic to actually diagnose gallbladder problems. So CCY will get the gallbladder and pancreas working to digest. CCY is actually cholecystokinin. Now, to optimize cholecystokinin, fiber and protein will help you make more of that. Another hunger hormone is pep
peptide YY, and that will reduce an appetite. So, as we said, insulin is in response to a heart carbohydrate, and it's designed to bring the sugar into the cell for energy. But a high spike in this insulin will stimulate the appetite. Now, cortisol from the adrenal gland, and just think of the word adrenaline, adrenal gland. So cortisol from the adrenal gland is our stress hormone that gets released, and it will lead to overeating, as there is a cascade of events where it will stimulate the insulin production and increase hunger. Now, we've got dopamine. Dopamine is a neurochemical, and if it is low, it's going to yield a lot of hunger pains. Now, dopamine, we understand as one of our brain chemicals. So interestingly, and thankfully, coffee increases dopamine, and therefore it suppresses appetite for a time being. Fasting many times will affect the dopamine levels. And I need to give you a word of warning. Cannabis lowers dopamine, which will give you the intense munchies. And this is the mechanism of why some people will smoke marijuana and notice the intense munchies. Now, dopamine is made from L-tyrosine. And L-tyrosine is one of those amino acids that we need to actually build some of the brain chemistry as we need some amino acids to build other brain chemistry. So dopamine we can get by eating fava beans, chicken, oats, mustard greens, which it's high in, ricotta cheese, chocolate, and some edamame. And of course, there's some other foods as well. We have some other hormones that are very well known to you all, which is estrogen. Estrogen will curb an appetite because it behaves very similarly to leptin. Now the opposing yin-yang balance, of course we have the yin now of progesterone, it can actually increase an appetite. And if any practitioners are familiar or can recall that we use megase in some hospice patients and we'll also use it in HIV patients with wasting syndrome. It's a synthetic progestin that will be treated to increase appetite in those patients. Now for you men, testosterone, and of course as women make a little bit of testosterone, that can actually increase ghrelin, which can increase appetite. So I painted a very brief picture of the up and comer information on what makes us hungry, what makes us eat, what stops us from eating, and how some of these can be manipulated in current medications, how they can be optimized by ingesting the building blocks, and how we can keep this symphony of hormones at play as it's talking to the hypothalamus to help control hunger, which can help control weight. Now, I need to give a disclaimer that many of us Americans are not eating because of our hunger triggers. Many of us are eating because we are responding to non hunger related triggers, and that may be visual, that may be smells, that may be commercials, that may be we're scheduling uh, meal time, whether we are hungry or not. We are telling ourselves we need nighttime snacks before we go to bed. And again, that is a whole other aspect of why we overeat. So I would postulate that our bodies were perfectly created to have hunger and hunger control mechanisms, and all we need to do is listen to them. So, of course, this just scratches the surface. I will appreciate any feedback. 
please subscribe to my channel below. Share this with all people who need a understanding of hunger, hormones, as it relates to our weight control. So until we meet again, be well.